Happy Sunday, my church family, and happy Isaiah 58 weekend. Once again, this Sunday morning, we are out in our community, in neighborhoods, at folks' homes, here in the church building, encouraging, ministering to, contending for, and serving the people who God has called us to love, specifically this Sunday, in the different ways that we have been invited to do that. One really exciting opportunity that we are launching this weekend is our Sidewalk Sunday School Ministry, where we are actually sending out a ministry team to a local community neighborhood, and we're going to minister to the families and specifically the children there. So please be praying for every heart that's involved in that outreach, in that ministry, and every heart that's receiving ministry, encouragement, and maybe the good news for the first time. I can't wait to see what testimonies come out of this new venture that we're stepping into with the Lord. I also wanted to just invite you all to join us for our Easter weekend services, which are coming up in just a few short weeks. First, we will have our Good Friday service on Good Friday, which is Friday, April 15th, and that will be at 6 p.m. here at my church, and we'll be having communion together as a part of that service. And then on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we will have our two special services at the regular times of 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. with some great hospitality and just a really meaningful time to celebrate as a church family. So I hope you can join us for one of those events and participate in what's happening on Easter weekend. As we head into a time of worship, I was just reminded this morning that God is always only good. He's good in the good, and He's good in the hard, and He shows up for each of us in exactly the way that we need in each moment. So wherever you find yourself this morning, today, whenever you're watching this, I pray that you would have eyes to see His goodness right where you are. Now we're gonna enter into a time of worship. You give life, you are love. It's your breath 
Hey everyone, hope you've been having a great week and I want to thank you for joining our church online service. Um, as it's been mentioned before, this is our Isaiah 58 Sunday where we get out and do outreach and projects and missions out in the community. And uh, this Sunday uh, is very, very special to us because it's our first Sidewalk Sunday School, a ministry that we're launching this weekend and uh, something that's been in our heart for many years that God has put just a burden in our hearts for the children, not just within the four walls of our church, but in our community. And so uh, a team has been assembled, uh, finances have been raised, and we have just words and momentum to, to go out and to introduce uh, young people to Jesus. And we're so excited to do that. The, the word says that the harvest is ripe, but the workers are few. Um, to pray for the workers of the harvest to be sent out. And honestly, it's usually uh, us realizing we're the answer to our own prayer, that we go out and get out in the harvest field. And so that's what this weekend's all about. And we're excited about this Sidewalk Sunday School. Speaking of children, I want to look in uh, Matthew 18 today about Jesus teaching on the greatness of the kingdom and what children can teach us about greatness. Now, I just want to say uh, for those of you that are tuning in and tuning into the word that I want to commend you for having a hunger for God's word. You're listening, you're, you're watching because you're hungry and you want to dig into the word. And the Bible says all those that hunger and thirst after him will be filled. And so my prayer and the promise of his word is that you'll be nourished through the word and that God is so pleased with your hunger. And we're gonna get right into it and we're gonna let the word just minister to us and uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God is gonna speak to you and I through his scripture. Matthew 18, one through three, it says, at that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them and said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like, a little, like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now I wanna pray, Lord, I pray that this word would go to work in our hearts and we give you permission. Lord, even as we read the words of red of what Jesus has said, I pray, Lord, that you would bring revelation to that and ultimately a transformation to our hearts God, we wanna become like little children, as Jesus said, to enter into your kingdom and to know what your kingdom is about. I pray you'd unlock, Lord, those, those truths to us. And uh, we pray this in Jesus' mighty name, amen. I've titled this message, Childlike Greatness. 
childlike greatness. Now, children can teach us a lot of things. I'm a father of four, and uh, I'll never forget the first moment that I held my eldest daughter, Justice, in my hands. I was in Seattle, Capitol Hill, Peace Health there, and uh, she had been, just been delivered a cesarean, and the doctor placed Justice right in my hands. And I, I remember this feeling, she was so precious, she was so small, so um, fragile in my hands. And right then and there, my child taught me what truly mattered in life. You know, as a young man and you have all these priorities, ambitions and hobbies and things, it all just distilled and narrowed down that really taking care of this young girl and fathering her well is, is truly important. My priorities cleared up. I mean, I started to make better decisions. I started to take less risk. You could feel the weight of responsibility and the transformation taking place just for the impact of a child coming in to my life. They teach us so many things. They, they teach us what is important, what is beautiful. I just marvel at my four children of, of the, the artistry of God and, and what an incredible designer he is. They're all beautiful in their own unique way and each one has a unique personality and that's something that uh, my wife and I marvel at that each personality is completely different to the next one and God is so creative and how he, he brings, you know, how he, he, he creates life and how they're fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, they taught me how to live off of less sleep and how to uh, depend on more coffee, uh, in the, especially in the younger years. Uh, teaching how to uh, be self-sacrificing and and thinking of them more than myself and you know you get more children you get more responsibilities you don't get any more hours in the day also teaching teaching me that a sin nature is a real thing you know in case you're wondering are we really born with a sin nature observing children they they're born and and they're thinking about themselves man they're selfish and that's where discipline comes in to place and training them up and to to be selfless and and giving and all those things they they teach us so much but jesus says that children also teach us what greatness looks like in the kingdom, which I find so fascinating that here in this illustration, he takes a child and he says, this is what greatness looks like. His disciples ask him in this question. It started with a question, who is the greatest in the kingdom? And I get a kick out of that question because isn't that a question that we often ask? Maybe we are brave enough to admit it or not, but we all carry around measuring sticks or measuring tapes. We want to measure what is great and how great is that? Think about the sports world. It's who's the greatest of all time. Is it Michael Jordan? Is it LeBron James? It's definitely Michael Jordan, hands down. We want to know. We want to measure that. You think about football. Is it Tom Brady? Yeah, you now he's back. You know, he came out of retirement. He is one of the greatest. I don't know. Is he the greatest? But that's just the sports world. We get into business. We get into the kingdom. Who is the greatest? And of course, the disciples are thinking, man, is it King David? Is it Moses? Is it the one that wields the authority and the one that has achieved? And there again, Jesus confounds them with taking a child and saying, if, unless you become like a child, you cannot enter into the kingdom. Greatness is exemplified in childlike faith. Who, the, what we can learn from a child. And I've got three things that, that we can learn what greatness looks like in children. Number one, children are humble. Children are humble. The Greek word used here that Jesus is, is says and is translated is tapaneo, which means without arrogance. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never met an arrogant child. A child that's, let's say, from the age of one to five or six, arrogance comes through experience of achievement when all of a sudden we feel like we are great or we feel like we've achieved something and that's where the old saying goes it, it, it that that achievement or that 
thing that you did go straight to your head. I remember the first time I scored a bucket in basketball, man, did that inflate my ego. And there knocking at the door is the arrogance and the pride that comes with feeling like we're, we're something, where a child is in wonder, is looking at the greatness around them, is looking how great their parents are, how great their influences are, or how great their teacher is in those early years. They're not thinking of how great they are. They're here to learn. They're here to observe. They're here to celebrate. And Jesus says, that's like the kingdom. Now we come into the kingdom and we lay down our arrogance. We lay down who we think we are. If we think we're so important, we need to get over self-importance and say, God is great. He's incredible. We'll esteem others above ourselves. We'll, we'll see that we're teachable. We're humble. This is what the child teaches us in greatness in the kingdom. Man, we need to repent of our pride sometimes. You know, prayer is such an incredible way to humble ourselves, to pray for our needs, to pray to the Lord. You know, I've, I've heard a quote that says, if it's not birthed in prayer, whatever we do our endeavors, it's birthed in pride. That God wants us to come in humbly into the kingdom, that we come in lowly, that word, tapaneu, without arrogance, to take a lowly position. In that culture, children were taking the lowly position. You know, now in the culture that we have, now we, we really do celebrate children. It's all about the kids. It's all about that. Uh, back then, it was, it was less about the children. It was more about respect for the elders and all that. And so the children didn't really have any status in their society. And therefore, Jesus says, that's what greatness looks like in the kingdom, that we don't assume status. We don't assume that we have a position and that we deserve this and we're entitled to that, but we lay down our arrogance, we lay down our pride, and we come into the kingdom humbly. What would it look like for believers in the church to say, you know, we, we just lay down our crowns, we lay down our achievements, and we really come in humbly and, you know, Great believers that I know that are older and more advanced in years, they often say, the older I get, the more I realize I need Jesus, the more humble that they can grow and say, you know, they, they really, really um, feel like they have less answers and they're more in awe of who God is in the vastness. That's what becoming childlike in that regard is like, to grow in humility. Number two, Children are believers. Children are believers. You may say, well, no, I'm a born skeptic. No, you weren't. You believed everything your parents told you. The Santa Claus, Tooth Fairy, whatever it was, your parents said it, you believed it. Children are born believers. Skepticism comes after you realize what your parents told you was not real i.e. Santa Claus, where after we feel duped or we feel like, well, that's not factual. Now we have Google. We got to be careful what we tell our children nowadays. It's not just because mom and dad told you so. They can go ahead and Google it and figure out for themselves. But as children, as we grow up, we, we believe. We have a childlike faith. And man, that is greatness in the kingdom. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God and Jesus says, the faith of a child is greatness in the kingdom. To take away the unbelief and step into a childlike faith. John 20, 29, Jesus is resurrected from the dead, a miracle, no doubt. And the disciples are, they don't even have a place to file this miracle. They've, they've just been uh, in deep shock and, and loss and, and sorrow of losing their savior. And then Jesus appears and they see him. Some believe, but Thomas, for example, doesn't believe and, and he, he struggles with believing that Jesus actually raised from the dead and he needs to see proof. He needs to see the scars in Jesus's hands. And Jesus says in John 20, 29, he says, Thomas, you believe because you saw, but blessed are those who believe and have not seen. What is Jesus saying? 
saying, blessed are those who believe because they have heard, that have trusted it in God's word, trusted in the testimony of God saying, I will raise again, or I have raised again, or I'm gonna do this, that we believe before we see it, and that is greatness in the kingdom of God. That's faith. What has God said? What has he spoken to you that he's saying, believe, where there might be something inside of you that says, well, I need to see some proof. I need a little bit of a down payment to get my confidence to trust in what God said. Remember the child, what the, what the dad says, the child believes. That's how God wants us to operate with him. What God says, I believe. What he says in his word, I'm gonna believe with a childlike faith. If you wanna be on the cutting edge of what God is doing, then you need to believe what God says and not wait to see it. Because those that are on the front end of what God is doing, they are the ones that need to believe in the prophetic utterance of what God is saying, that God's gonna give you a sign, he's gonna give you a word, and you're gonna partner with that, and then you're gonna see the fruition take place right before your eyes. You've got to believe it before you see it, and this is what we can learn from childlike faith and childlike greatness in the kingdom. And thirdly, and I love this one, children are inclusive. Children are inclusive. I'm talking about the four, five-year-old, the six-year-old. I observed my children in kindergarten four years with, with my first, my second, my third, my fourth, and I just noticed, you know, in kindergarten, man, everybody was everybody's friend. It was like, could you be my friend? Do you wanna be my friend? It didn't matter if it was a boy or a girl, uh, black, brown, yellow, whatever it was, status, interest, there was an inclusiveness that was so beautiful and innocence. Um, and then you get into first grade and second grade and third grade, they start to see differences. They start to see, well, maybe we don't have so much in common, or maybe I don't wanna be around that person, or maybe, maybe I don't click with that, or maybe the, I'm not good enough for them, or they're not good enough for me. No, Jesus is pointing out to be childlike, to be great in the kingdom, is to be accepting of all, and to get over differences, to not see those things, and to be inclusive. Man, I would love it if we could just erase and get rid of status, if we could get rid of uh, what social class you might be in, and we could prefer everyone higher than ourselves back to humility that we're called to be inclusive. What does greatness look like in the kingdom? It looks like accepting everybody. It looks like befriending, reaching out, and saying, you are valuable. You are valuable to God, so you're valuable to me. I see that, and I want to champion that. Man, God's calling us to be in the kingdom. He's calling us to greatness, but it looks completely different to what has been modeled to us in the culture. It's not about achieving status and leveraging your authority over others and taking advantage of your opportunities for yourself. It's about being humble, void of arrogance, knowing that Jesus has given us everything, that it's all by grace we enter in. It's about faith like a child. It's about believing him at his word, saying, God, you've given me no reason not to trust you. You're my dad, whatever you say, I'm gonna believe because you're a good father and I trust that you are holy. And it's about treating others with decency and value and respect and being inclusive, that the kingdom of God is not a country club, but it is a family of us enfolding one another uh, for his glory and it pleases the Lord. Let's pray. God, we just thank you for your kingdom. We thank you that we've been ushered in by grace. We, we, don't, we don't even deserve it. We just can't even believe that you would, you would invite us into the family of God. Lord, teach us what it is to enter in through humility, to enter it in with your heart, Lord. We love your standard of greatness in the kingdom. And I pray that you would build a great church that would be a, a city shining on a hill and that would bring glory to you. Bless everyone that 
is tuning in, hearing your word. Let, let your words remain in them. And Lord, bless them as they go out. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.